Under one. Thin ice! <laughs> To smoke some weed and shut up. My god. Oh, that's up for sure. There it is. Boom! Yes! Okay, uh, Atlanta Basketball Podcast episode 205, uh, March 8th, 2024. Nice, nailed it. Um, coming to you live on a Friday evening, afternoon, you know, 4 Central, 5 Eastern. If you're in Hawaii, it's like what? 10 a.m. somewhere around there at 11 a.m. possibly. Sure. Uh, but yeah, we're uh, you know, lots to discuss today. I'm going to send it over to Tyler here because I don't even know what we're yeah. doing technically. Because <laughs> I haven't paid attention. That's all. Yeah. yeah. What's new? Um, so we got Alex G here, uh, Mr. Armchair Illini. We will call him. Um, if you're not following him at, at Armchair Illini, um, and he is doing a giveaway with charliehustle.com at charlie hustle co um on twitter and you can go find a lot of Illini gear on their website alex has been asking people to retweet uh or share on facebook a post that he had and he's going to do the drawing now so uh, alex welcome thanks for coming by and doing this and awesome yeah thanks guys for having me on you guys are killing it recently um, Tyler, it. thank you for bringing up this this great idea to have us announce the giveaway between Armchair and, and Charlie Hustle here on the show. So appreciate your guys' time. Yeah, um, it will be nice and quick. You know what we'll do here is announce the winner. I'll post this onto Facebook or Twitter just to kind of tag the person that won this, um, and whoever wins this will be in touch, and we'll get this shipped out to you. Um, just a reminder, it is a, a very nice little Illini hoodie and a Charlie Hustle gift card. $50 um, will be shipped to to you and let us know if anything else goes wrong. But without further ado, let's get to it. Um, Ethan, if you don't mind sharing my screen here. Here we go. That look good? Yep. Yeah, it looks good. Awesome. So, yeah, we had quite a, no a number of people here. I put them all in a little Google sheet here obviously numbers one through 94 um there was a lot more that entered but again you guys had to be following both us <laughs> and charlie hustle so some people did fall off the list but thank you all for for retweeting and showing your support charlie hustle is very good they got a lot of things actually on sale in terms of Illini gear so check them out um so yeah one through 94 here and just to show to you guys that there's no you know bias here there's a random integer generator here on google um with the minimum one and the max 94 so without further ado we will announce the winner here and number 29 which is on uh, wyatt underscore mcg so wyatt underscore mcg um i will dm you if you're not watching this um and and get in touch but congratulations you just won yourself the armchair liner and charlie hustle giveaway so congratulations i will again dm you and get you what you need okay so Thank you. Thank you awesome. guys for letting me do this on the show. Yeah. Uh, for those of you watching, these guys are killing it. So please tune into them. They they make multiple shows, especially the live watch parties. They're they're quite a lot of fun. <laughs> Ethan's very, very calm during them. Definitely. Yeah. Always, always. He won't go after the chat ever either. So. Ever. Ever. No, no. <laughs> ever. <laughs> well, Alex, thanks for coming by. We appreciate you. And congratulations right. to Wyatt uh on your on your gear and your gift card. That's awesome. So all right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Thanks. Enjoy the rest Have a good of the one, buddy. Yep. Take care. Thank you. All right. So, Illinois did lose in their last game. They did. Who'd they play? I think, I think that needs to be discussed. Uh, bottom Purdue. Of the, bottom of the barrel team, per, Purdue. You know, I forgot that Purdue made it to a Sweet 16 two years ago. I, I, that that slipped my this, mind. The, getting beat by the 16 kind of erased any – any they also, I mean, that. that's Sweet 16. They lost to a 15. So St. Peter's. I completely yeah. forgot about that tournament, by the way. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and that was like the best Final Four we could have ever had with Kansas, Villanova, Duke, North Carolina. And I just completely forgot. All I remember is Caleb Love ending Coach K's career, which was one of the greatest moments of all time. So Illinois lost on Tuesday night, which I think this was a solo Peacock game. Yeah, it was. I, the only it, Big Ten game they, that night, I believe. Yeah, very weird. But I guess it lived up in terms of it was a good basketball game. It was it close. Was. Uh, 
you know, I think I would have liked to see a bit more scoring mm-hmm. on the side of the Illini, especially. Um, but I think if if before we get into it, I think if you come away from this game with anything other than a level headed take, I think you're a moron. And that's you know, <laughs> that's just the, the way it is. Am I wrong? I mean, like, no, I I a hundred percent agree with that. I mean, Purdue's a really good team, they're a top three team. You know, there's only three teams that are probably locks at number one right now. Purdue has a chance to be overall number one. You gave them a game. You gave them a great game in the first half. Second half, Matt Painter might have, I, I don't want to say outcoached Brad Underwood, but um, he changed some things up. Brad changed some things up, and Painter's way of changing things up did a little bit better. So, uh, Bootzilla, what's up? Warner, what's going on? Eric, how you doing? Eric, again, go Illini. Tommy, what's going on? Chi Zhang, how are you guys? Thanks for coming in. Uh, as always, we'll start off with the uh, player of the game. Um, you said you were going to go with my pick, but you didn't know it was Coleman Hawkins. So. I thought your pick sucked, so I changed. <laughs> uh, Coleman, 33 minutes, 13 points, 5 for 10 from the field, 0 for 1 from 3. Not good that he only shot 1-3. He only shot one last game also. 3 for 3 from the line, 9 rebounds, 1 assist, 3 steals, one turnover by Coleman. Um, like Coleman was good. Uh, post defense, not great, but Zach Eady. Uh, Illinois tried to change some things up. We'll talk about that later, uh, the defense against Eady. But uh, it didn't work out. Again, I'd like him to shoot more. I thought he got to the rim well. Uh, there was that one he got blocked on. Illini fans wanted it to be a foul. Purdue fans said it was clear ball. It is what it is. I don't think the refs were bad this game. So I don't want to complain about refs. Illinois actually shot seven more free throws and fouled two less times. So especially in a game where Brad Underwood clearly said that he was he put Hansberry into foul, which we'll also get to. But uh, Coleman, after the game, um, he said, quote, the biggest thing is what we saw late. We are all familiar with Zach Eady, And one of the biggest emphasis was just push his catches out and scoring over us and through us one on one and not letting our guys in, not letting other guys impact the game and we saw what happened when that occurred a couple of Gillis threes and some threes from lawyer and Brandon Smith got off a little bit late um he basically was saying we'll let Edie get to his um but Brad changed that later uh Coleman said they did a good job on TKR. Do we care that they did a good job on TKR? I know they dominated Illinois last time, but for that to be an emphasis is kind of weird to me. Well, I don't think what you just said was an actual word, but yeah, I don't I don't think that uh you don't think emphasis is a word. You said you said nymphosis. I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh yeah, you did. Run run that clip back, chat. Uh I mean, I don't think that was it an actual emphasis. Did he say that? I mean, I don't know. I, I think that based on what he did in the first game against him, that's something you say, you know, to be fair. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't think he says that if, if he doesn't have the game he did in the first game against him, which, you know, I don't right. think anybody, I don't think they were actually in, w- that worried about stopping him. Yeah. I think pretty clearly the focus is on trying to limit Edie as much as they could. And they didn't do that, but they also held the guards in check in the first half and then just didn't in the second half. Yeah, and it it was a lot of doubling ED, uh, which ended up turning into like four guys in the paint against ED, which you can't do that against Purdue. Um, Coleman also said, quote, they started to do a late switch with Zach ED whenever that guard got clipped. We were setting that high ball screen for me to pick and pop. Whenever he got clipped, he would just switch on to me when I popped, so Edie was staying out on him. Felt like we played a lot of one-on-one, and we didn't really touch the paint and spray out. I think we just moved the ball around the three-point line, but I think we still got off. We still have gotten whatever shots we wanted. We just didn't have some shots fall. So uh, Coleman wasn't very happy with the offense in the second half. Um, Obviously, they didn't score well, 31 points, but... Um, Warner asked him about his knee. Are we worried about Coleman Hawkins' knee? I thought that I thought he how, was okay. How, how, how would we know? You know, but how would we we know? Did, I'm we, asking we if you're worried about it. Yeah, did we didn't notice it? anything. So okay. Well, Warner apparently did. He must be better. What the hell does he know? <laughs> he must be better than us. So yeah. But yeah, I thought it was a good game by Coleman. Um, he got some stuff inside. 
uh, again, shoot a couple more threes, but nine rebounds when the team was not great at rebounding the ball this game, I think was big. So go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I will say one thing before my player of the game is like this comment here said the shooting was off. Like the oh. pro- problem that I had is like, what is with the not wanting to shoot stuff? Yeah. As hell. Pass, they passed up a lot of shots. I'm trying to find how many threes they took down the stretch. They took one, two. They took three threes in the final 10 minutes. Yeah. Missed them all. Harmon miss. Harmon miss. He was open on both of those, by the way. Mm -hmm. Shannon miss. They took a total of one, two, three, four, five, six threes in the second half. Like, what, what, what are we doing? Like, some of these possessions where you're just passing up shots constantly is stuff that happens in the games they lose. There's multiple yeah. examples of this. Uh, and really, I thought that the only guy that even wanted to have the ball in his hand the entire second half was Damask, and that's why I picked him as play of the game. Even though he had four turnovers, he was the only guy with the ball in his hand for it felt like the entire second half. He played 36 minutes, 20 points. That was a terrific transition. Thank you. Uh, 8 of 16 <laughs> from the field, 0 for 2 from 3, 4 for 4 from the free throw line, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal, 4 turnovers, which I – the Damask having the ball in his hands the entire second half is fun when he's making everything. Yeah. And when guys are, you know, cutting and doing the right, like making the right plays, which Harmon goes from a game where he was making the right plays at Wisconsin to this game where he was not. Awful. And I understand why Brad had him in the game in the final eight minutes. However, once you get to like the three minute mark and he's still making mistakes and not doing anything, take him out. Like, what are you doing? Take him out. Stop trusting your instinct. And guess what? People will say Brad's stubborn, quote unquote. I think he might be the least stubborn coach in the Big Ten. He's up there because look how many different changes and adjustments he's made to his offense in the last his entire time here. They've run three different offenses. You think that's a yeah. guy who's stubborn? Like, no. come on. I know he looks like a stubborn person, just physically. I don't, he looks yeah. like it. I don't think he's stuff, stubborn. I think that his adjustments get out adjusted, <laughs> is what I think happens. Um I think it happens against a guy like Painter, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, Damas said, uh, quote, through film, we tried to identify what we thought they were going to do, but they did some different stuff. Great. Um, he said of, there, was, the game. there was miscommunications on defense late because they were using different coverages. Um, that coverage being sent four guys to guard Edie, I guess. Um and his biggest thing was, you know, get better at defense, boxing out. You got to get rebounds. Brad hammered home. You got to rebound better. Our guards got to rebound better. Plus That's one what Illinois rebounds. needs to do. So, um, sorry. Uh, Cheezang says, I don't mind the trapping and digging on eating in the second half, but it's clear we don't do it a lot, and it showed per Latulip's an- an- analysis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of what, what Marcus was saying here. I mean – he said that they changed up their defense and they didn't know what to do in that defense. I mean, if you're going to go to it, I you think that you would have, pra- I'm sure they practice it, but you think that you'd be a little bit better. Uh, Warner says it felt like there weren't as many possessions in this game with the slower pace. I think they said there were like 63. I, I, they said it in the post game, but I can't remember what it was. It was low, for, especially for an Illinois game, which is what Purdue wanted. I mean, Purdue played the game they wanted. They wore the shot clock down, made it made Illinois wear the shot clock down, slow it down. That's definitely in Purdue's advantage here. Uh, Warner says Hawkins said in a recent interview his knee still bothers him. Yeah, he said that he's you know they got some days off and then su- they play Sunday. They don't play again until Friday. So Isn't that what they said all along, like this was going to bother him no matter what. Yeah, forever. Yeah. yeah. So, well, so I mean, it's not. A, he was fine in this game, so I don't know why. Or as to, like, if he actually re-injures it, yeah, but I don't think he re-injured it. Yeah, I don't. He, he said that he tweaked it on the lawyer play a, a little bit, but I don't know. I get he was like rubbing his knee, which I like. I think it was just a nervous rub, and then Warner brought it up that he was. He's fine. <laughs> he's fine. Uh, Chi Zhang says the team contracted last year's Coleman. Don't shoot Titus. You know, Coleman Hawkins is shooting 41% from three in conference. We can't have him shooting only two threes in two games. He's one for two. I agree. But still, like he's taking two threes in these two games. Yeah. Um, And, I mean, credit Purdue. I mean, Edie getting out there on him. Um, 
and preventing him from doing it. So that's why you get Ty in the game. Have ED guard Ty and just feed Coleman the ball. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they are too unselfish. I don't know why they are afraid to shoot. Brad wants them to shoot threes. Yeah, it's crazy that um, we call them unselfish, but I mean, it's not like they uh, get a lot of assists. So Brad looks grouchy. Yeah, Brad's always grouchy, especially after a loss. That's why people think he's so stubborn and afraid to adjust. Uh, Chi Zhang said, for what it's worth, ED looked like he got gassed and worn out at the end. He wasn't yeah. very good in the second half, I don't think. That's because Brad attacked him. Much better. Exactly. But then guess what? You know, Lawyer and Smith and Jones started to make shots and Gillis yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, Terrence Shannon, probably one of the the lesser games he's had since he's been back. I don't want to say worse because I don't remember him that well, the first couple that he was back, but um, might have been his worst game of the year. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Indiana game was pretty awful. Yeah. It's two for 10 from the field with 12 points and eight free throws. Yeah. Um, 32 minutes for him uh, was hindered by some foul trouble in the first half. Had two fouls. Brad kind of picked and, picked and choose where to put him in. Um, 11 points, three for 13. It was 0 for 4 from three, five for five from the line, two rebounds, one assist, two turnovers. Um, Brad was not happy about the rebounds. He had no defensive rebounds. Um, the ED tip out towards the end was kind of the backbreaker. And then I think Gillis got it and then found Smith and Smith popped one right in his face. Uh, Harmon was under there, but he wasn't boxing out. I think that's why you need a Gary a or somebody in there. That's bigger that can actually box out Zach ED, but that was Brad's choice. That's what he made. That's what we live with. Uh, he's, Brad said, quote, get a stop and you can't get a rebound twice. We have to have a better rebounding. We have to have better better rebounding from our perimeter players. Plain and simple. TJ had no offensive rebounds tonight. Zero. Best athlete. We've got to get better at rebounding. we got to get better rebounding from our guards. It's the difference in the game. Um. Brad said that the bench, you know, took him out of the rhythm. He didn't have any rhythm in this game. Um, and somebody asked him if he needs to, you know, get rebounds and get out and transition himself. And he said, quote, there was a play late in the game where he is at half court. He is trying to get a run out at half court. He and I are going to have a hard talk about going into about that going into postseason play. That's where IO blossomed. So uh Brad just would like him to attack the boards. I mean, I, I get what he's saying. You can't stand at half court hoping that your team gets a rebound and you can have a run out. You got to create that yourself. And Iowa was probably one of the best at doing that. So at least he's got somebody to show him. Terrence Shannon has two games this year above 10 rebounds. Missouri, yeah. 11. He talked about the game where he scored 35 and he had 11 rebounds that game. Penn State. 11. Yeah. The loss. Uh, Chi Thing says, did TSJ hurt his wrist? Read a few comments about that in other game threads. I haven't heard that. Did he have something on his wrist this game, or are you talking about he hurt it this game? Uh, Warner Edie was red flushed more than I usually see him. You know, when you send Hansberry in there to beat somebody up. Uh, uh, Illini fans are like some of the great speculators of all time. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not saying cheesing. I'm just saying other game threads. Like, everybody, there's always right. something. It's really, it's, 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 there's got to be a real, you can't just have off nights, right? I see Twitter. Like, yeah, exactly. I see Twitter. I see Twitter. Twitter Twitter's fudging the numbers again. Yeah, Twitter's going crazy right now. Um, Eric uh, says TSJ wasn't aggressive. I think Zach bothered him a little. I mean, when your game is getting to the rim and they got a 7-4 guy underneath, kind of hurts the game a little bit. The good thing is we're not going to see another Zach Eady for a Until while. we play UConn in the national championship. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Wade, we aren't going to win any games against top 25 teams with TSJ having an off night like that. I mean, I well, think you, I think you can. 
Well, you remember what we said when they beat Kansas in the exhibition? What's that? I don't, Coleman, you know if, I don't remember that. Well, I, I said I'm, I'm just reusing a line I used the other night in the watch party. Uh -huh. If Coleman and TSJ are making six or seven threes, they're literally unbeatable. However, when they're yeah. making zero threes and then the rest of the team is making four. Yeah. And two of those are Gary A, right? Three of those Three. are Gary A. <laughs> the, other, the other one was Goody. And Gary A sat on the bench. So uh, Eric says, Brad was very unhappy with the toughness on Tuesday. Need to get loose balls and rebounds. Yeah, we got a few quotes from him coming up uh, during the game. He got hurt. I did not you know, see that. Two of your two of your toughest uh, two of your toughest players and best cutters and best rebounders are just sitting on the bench during this, by the way, Brad. So way to be unhappy about the toughness when you <laughs> fucked up the rotation. <laughs> it's true. That's true. I mean, I'm not going to say that Goody isn't tough. He just isn't. He sucks. Uh, the ability isn't doesn't seem there. I mean, he walked on senior night. He's going to go be an accountant somewhere. He just year. seems to be. He just seems to be lost sometimes. You know. Yeah, he does. He does. There's not a spot for him out there. I don't even think it's his fault. No, I don't. It is what it is. Uh, Quincy, 24 minutes, 12 points, three for five, three for four from three, three for six from the line. The best 50% free throw shooter we got. Two rebounds, one steal, two turnovers for him. I mean, we've been talking about this whole time. I uh, think he should have had a, some run late in the game. I don't know why he was was not played. You needed rebounds. You knew you needed rebounds. Put in a guy that can rebound the ball. Uh, tie, 18 minutes, three for three, two for two from the line. Eight points, four rebounds. Three of those were offensive. No turnovers for Ty. Um, I mean, didn't handle the ball. He was playing the dunker position with Zach Eady in. But um, Brad thought that Ty was terrific with how he attacked Zach Eady. This is, might be one of the first games Ty Rogers has ever sat because he wasn't good defensively. Yeah. I don't think Brad thought that he could hang with, with uh, their guards. Yeah, do you think that he has a quicker step out though, at least to to you know contest some of those threes? Is Ty the one that fouled Gillis in the corner on the three, or was that Goody? It's Goody. Gave him a high five. Didn't look like a foul, but yeah. Why wasn't Gary in the game in the second half? I, Wade. You're asking all the questions we are. She's saying, just wait until Goody gets fletched up one more year and comes back super swole. Then he really won't be able to shoot uh, a la Kipper Nichols. Ever heard of I that got one? two things Two things on Luke Goody. Number one, I don't think we should just rule out him not coming back next year. No, I just, think he's going to be back. I, I, well, that was, I'm uh, joking. I'm just, I'm just, you know, he might not be. He I think some not. people are ruling it out. We can't rule it out. Number two, uh, he was really good in the first Purdue game. So yeah, if that's why Brad was, was playing, him, I guess. But guess what? He got two threes off. He shot eight in that other game. He did play way more minutes too. He started in that game, but yeah, uh, this, a lot no of this game. Terrence Chan in that game too. So. Correct. Statistically, a lot of this game was very similar to the first one. It's just this game was different because Illinois was up at the half, and yeah. the big difference I think is that Illinois made eight threes in that game. They only made four in this game. That was the difference because you look at some of the numbers. You know, Damask had twenty six in that game. Uh, you know, Hawkins had eleven. Uh, Ty obviously was useless in that game. Harmon actually did things in that game. He didn't do anything in this game, but uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of the numbers were similar. And I, you know. Uh, Coleman talked about the second half and, you know, the offense was kind of stagnant or whatever. I don't know why Brad didn't try to run any of those pin down screens for Shannon to get him, you know, an open jumper in the middle or something like that. It, it seems like it worked in the game before. And then Brad said, I don't care to try that. Maybe he didn't think he could do it against Purdue. I don't know. But uh, again, it's all speculation and what ifs. Doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, Harmon, 21 minutes, zero points, 0 for 3, 0 for 2 from 3, three rebounds, one assist, one steal, one block, one turnover. Again, Bad. we've we've talked about why why was he in? We don't know. I I I 
don't like it that he was in, especially when Illinois needed rebounds and stops. Uh, Goody, 19 minutes, three points, one for two from three, two rebounds, one assist. No turnovers for Luke. Um, I think we kind of talked about those two enough. Danger, seven minutes, four points, two for two. I don't know why I have 0 for 1 from 3. That means free throw line, <laughs> I assume. Um, one rebound, one steal, two turnovers. Were you surprised I think, Dane, I think Dane, Dane in the second half? I think Dane played a perfect amount of minutes in this game. You don't think he should have played at all in the second half? Nope. Nope. That's crazy. What was he going to do out there other than exactly what Hansberry was doing? I, I mean, I think that he's – got a, a better physique than Hansberry that he could actually actually but, like my thing is with Hansberry is he was, he was doing foul. he was out there to to play hard and if they call a foul they call a foul he was fouling with ran in random positions why they were going down the court why they like I mean they they weren't good fouls aggressive the one the one off the ball fouls. the one off the ball early was not a good call to be fair, that's true. Um, but like, I, I let's think about Dane here for a second. It's just like I am so over trying to pretend like this offense is is great when when Dane's at the five. Like it's everything's moving and it's not slot. Like I, we don't need it. Like seven minutes is fine. Made a couple shots, good. Needed it, but like two, two terrible turnovers back to back too. You give him four minutes in the second half, get him to 11 minutes, I guess that's fine. But what is he going to do differently? Like, is he going to shut Edie down? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Definitely, he definitely wouldn't again, shut him maybe. down, but slow he him down. Yeah. But could he slow him down? Um, Illinois' way to slow him down was to basically throw guys at him. So, um, yeah, I mean, seven minutes is fine. I, I wouldn't mind a run or two just to see defensively if it helped at all because – Illinois' defense in the second half was not good. I think the know. plan. I think the plan is the same if Dane's out there too. Like yeah, he's still dropping pr- everybody, which doesn't do yeah. anything. I don't. Yeah, and I just don't. I don't like that against against Purdue. You can't. You just can't do it. So especially when they're running a lineup of. Uh, were they running a lineup of Smith, Lawyer, Jones, Edie, and Gillis, or did they have whatever variation that was? There was pretty much four shooters. Yeah. That's who was like, in, I believe. Then. That just feels so. like a dumb thing to do. Yeah. I think. I don't know if Jones was in or not. but Either way, at least three shooters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cheezang says, rumor is we're going to chase two guards and a wing in the portal. I wouldn't be surprised if Goody didn't come back. Uh, three ball I, was the difference in the second half. Yeah, Purdue 8 of 10 from three in the second half. It, that's <laughs> That's what you can't let Purdue do to you. One for six in the first half. Yeah. Uh, Warner says you have to try to recruit over Goody if you can. Can't settle. Uh, Eric says Harmon can't go scoreless playing all those minutes. They needed some points from him. Can I Can I, Can I? I make a point here? Yeah, you absolutely can. I think you could – I think Luke Goody can play on a winning team. I just don't think he can play 20 minutes on a winning team. I think he needs to play 10 – or yeah, 12. yeah, he's like that. I I mean, I know asijan has been getting more run now, but he's kind of like Asijan for Wisconsin. Well, well, where... well, 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 well. I mean, what? I mean, Asijan flat out doesn't even try defensively, <laughs> so there's a little bit of a difference. Okay, I'm just I'm just pointing out the type of player he could be for Illinois. A season also has a completely unlikable dickhead for a head coach. So, you know, <laughs> strike two. Okay. And strike right. three, it's Wisconsin. Who cares? They suck. I hate them. Uh, I hate their entire program. Um, but yeah, I, I think yeah. we're just talking. We're talking about Goody and like it, he's a number 11 on a good team when he's not. He's just like a decent. Yeah, he's 6'7". Six, six, seven, seven, like he's eight, not undersized. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't mean any shade by comparing him to Asijin, by the way. I know, but Asijin doesn't even like... You know. Dane took a three, yeah. Sorry, somebody wrote down stuff wrong. Uh, Hansberry can actually hold his ground. Dane gets moved out by small guys. Dane's weak. What about Coleman Hawkins, who guarded 80, like, 97% of the game? Coleman Hawkins, uh, like, he does everything else, you know? And it's not his fault that Edie literally has 75 pounds on him. 
I know. <laughs> like, yeah, there's nothing you can do against him. I, I like, I'm, I'm not. Uh, Eric says Amani is going to be a good player for the program. Uh, Goody can be our Rich McBride, says Chizang. Yeah, I'll run the numbers on that comparison. <laughs> All right. Uh, Moretti played six minutes in this game. He had an assist. A little burst, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was nice. kind of shocked that he, you know, ran minutes, but here we are. Uh, Hansberry, four minutes, took a three, missed it, four fouls. <laughs> so, uh, Brad, like you said, basically sent him in to foul and, you know, tough, you know, be tough against Edie. Um, he said, quote, we had to get them into the bonus. Um, he said, Edie isn't a great three point shooter. So one point is always better than two. And, uh, said it was in the repertoire of a way to guard Edie. So Brad, Brad tried like four things to stop Edie and he still got 28 points, but he was like nine of 13. At one point, he ended up 13 of 23 from the field, but yeah. So, uh, Illinois fans that want to say, you know, the refs are bad fouls, whatever. Like, I mean, Illinois fat, basically four fouls on purpose in this game and only had 15. Yep. Yep. Uh, Chizang says Coleman and Edie is how TJD felt guarding Kofi. Uh, it, it is funny how we couldn't do anything against TJJ after, uh, after Kofi left. Yeah. Last year was a disaster against him. Domination. Uh, Wade said, can Imani be a Draymond Green type of player for us eventually? Nope. Really? Draymond Green is 6'5". I mean, it's way different. He also can handle the ball a little bit better, right? Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think Imani, I think elements of it, yes, like, yeah, can surprisingly step out and shoot, which Draymond never really could do, but it felt like, I don't even know what the numbers are, but when the Warriors were great, it felt like Draymond Green could, could make threes. I don't know if he ever really did. Uh, but or I know he did, but I don't know, like percentage wise, what he did. But uh, we don't need a Draymond Green in this program, he's dirty. Cheesing thought Ty was our Draymond. Draymond is capable of making threes. <laughs> That's Remains true. Ty. Ty, Ty might be able to, we will never know. I don't think. Thoughts um, on uh, Marez Johnson's uh, high school team losing in the supers second, second round or whatever sectionals. I don't know. I, I mean, apparently that guy that he went against is really good too. Rutgers, Rutgers yeah, Rutgers. big man. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. He's Illinois, Mister Illinois basketball. Who cares? Shouldn't be losing to Peoria Richwoods. I mean, you just, you can't, you know. Yeah, you can. Win it's them all. annoying. Can't win. He's them going all. up against a guy going to Rutgers, and we're just allowing that to happen. <laughs> How many points did he have? You know his stat line in that game? I don't know, but it probably wasn't good enough. Okay. <laughs> did you see that absolute scam in New Jersey high school basketball? Yeah. Man, that's brutal. Sad deal. Something weird going on there. Yep. All right, let's get through this. I got a birthday party to go to. Yeah, you, Other... to go to uh, you, you actually want to go to stuff? Why would you want to do that? Well, I mean, it's just with my family. <laughs> so. yeah, you need to do that. All right, moving it's on. It's Friday night. Yeah, see that right there? Somerville had... 32. He's going to Rutgers. He's like Rutgers' third best recruit. Mraz had 12. Ouch. What the hell? Figure it out. No oh wonder boy. he's loyal to Illinois. He knows nobody else wants him. Oh, boy. Here we go. Okay. Are we going after guys that aren't even here yet now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, other notes and quotes. Uh, Warner asked Brad if he was just going to brush off this loss like he did Penn State. Uh, and if you haven't seen the video, go watch it. It's kind of funny. But he said, no, I'm not, I'm going to forget about it. Of course I am. Hell, I mean, what do you get? think I get paid for? Josh pays me a lot of money to keep hammering that shit home. I mean, you guys come up here with bad questions like that. You're going to get crappy answers. Of course I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm just going to blow it off. And we're just all going to sail off into the sunset and go home. It's what we do. We talked about it after Penn State. And I don't mean to be a jerk. Two things. To be, yeah, okay, you you go ahead. I don't. I think most of the questions do suck. Yeah, and I'm glad he called them out, but I don't think that was that bad of a question. I don't think it was that bad of a question. I think that he asked it wrong 
because Brad never said they didn't, you know, bust ass and, you know, get in guys' faces and say, stop playing like crap. He said, we didn't watch film on it. There's a, there's, those are two different things is the problem. And all he said was he didn't watch film on Penn State. He didn't say that he didn't get in the guys and tell them, you know, what they needed to do. I that's think that's asked, where I think the difference is. I think so. he asked the question that way, though. To and get I think Brad quote, jumped. Yeah. Did. And I think Brad jumped before he heard the Penn State part, too. <laughs> so I, I, I just think that, you know, Brad heard it, how it was coming out, and he, he, he went after him. But it was funny. You guys got to listen to it. Uh, 12 turnovers. For Illinois, this game, um, Brad said we turned the ball over every time in transition, and it killed us. Um, you know, Illinois is a transition team; you can't turn the ball over in transition. Uh, rebounds were Purdue thirty-one, Illinois twenty-nine. Forty-three Fouls, twenty-eight guess, last game. Forty-three twenty-eight in the first game against Purdue. Jeez. Illinois minus fifteen on the boards in that game. So much better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we already talked about the fouls. Don't care. Uh, Ed 28 points, thir- 13 for 23, eight rebounds, three assists, two blocks. Um, Brad said, quote, I thought we competed. I thought we did a great job on Zach. He gets his 28 on 23 shots. I was really happy with that. He also said, it's pick your poison. He was nine of 13. This is when Brad decided to change things up. He's going to put fouls on our guys. We have seen that song and dance many times in game fil- film. Matt's a really good coach. I mean, he didn't run anything except throw the ball to him, and all of a sudden it wipes out our lead, and you got to counter that. So, I mean, I don't hate the idea of making them make shots. However, yeah, it was pretty easy for those shooters for the most part, except for the last one. And also, uh, could Illinois have won this game if Edie doubled that pace and ended up with 36 on – 18 of 26 shooting. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. But yeah, hey, I mean, sometimes an adjustment's better than making no adjustment at all, even though this adjustment didn't work out at all. You know, it's, right. I don't know. I'm not one to, I'm not one to, uh, you know, completely question a guy who I know knows a lot more about basketball than me. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be a complete Brad defender. Obviously, the plan didn't work and you got to be held accountable for some of that stuff. But, uh, I think at the end of the day, more than anything, you give Purdue a bunch of credit on uh, the way that they executed down the stretch. Um, I know you're obsessed with Painter. I'm surprised we don't have any Painter quotes in here. I thought we would have gotten some stuff there. Don't um, care. Uh, it's not what the text you sent me said, but uh, I mean that was that was different though, and I didn't want to go back and listen to him. Where do you think Painter ranks I'm in the Big Ten, Illinois? Right now, got to be number one, right? I'd put Painter one. Yeah. I mean, I know that I know that he lost two. to a 16 seed, a 15 seed, and a 12 seed, and whatever. But I think he's number one. He just his guys are just so. And and, and I don't know if it's all Brad Painter, Brad Painter, Matt Painter, oh, <laughs> or he recruits guys that work hard and they do their job. And that's what Purdue is. It's a bunch of guys that do their job. Coleman made a comment about it. They know their assignments. They stick to them. That's why Illinois lacks sometimes is guys get lost. That's why they didn't want DGL. Yeah. They knew he wasn't assignment focused. Hell no. (laughs) Uh, Jay says Illinois needs to set up TSJ better in the half court to get him going. If they play a team like Purdue, which is, which really are few and far between. Yeah, that's what I said. I mean, they they ran, you know, screens for him and things in the half court last game. They did none of that this game. So uh, Wade said, I've been all in on this team for most of the year. I felt like this team has the best chance to make a deep run in the tournament because of our offense and how flexible we are. However, we can't seem to be anyone good. Extremely concerning for the tournament. The thing about the tournament is you just got to do it once. I mean, what what is defined as good? You know, because like, I think Northwestern we is have good. Beat. Yeah, North, Northwestern's good. I think he probably uh, more means top tier teams. Like it's fine, yeah. Tennessee Which and... you only get so many opportunities, and Illinois had uh, one, two, three, four of them, and they lost them. You know, and Purdue's had our number, 
right? I mean, it's five yeah. in a row, I think now. They had Illinois had a pretty good streak against them before that, though. I know. I'm just saying re- recency. Yeah, well, they're so, better. They are Makes better. Sense. They have a um, for giant. Yeah, like uh, Wisconsin, I don't think is very good, but a lot of the numbers would tell you they are. Plus, beating a desperate version of them at home, I still think that that would be defined as a good win. I know I we all know Wisconsin's not as good as their record, but still, you know, depends on the definition uh, of good. They have Warner's, good wins, but not great wins. Yeah, Warner says, let's not forget that three of the four good teams we've played are going to be one seeds. Three of the four? I don't know. Or three. Tennessee and Purdue Tennessee twice. Tennessee and Purdue and twice. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Two are Purdue, one or Tennessee. Okay. One is <laughs> the other one would be Marquette, would be the other one we're yeah. counting. But I still think, you know, beating Northwestern, beating Michigan State earlier in the year, from a metric standpoint, those are good wins. Those are top, yeah. tw- top 25 wins, except for, you know, Northwestern and Nebraska are not top 25 metric teams. Wisconsin and Michigan State uh, are, but yeah. They should have beaten at least one of Marquette and Tennessee. I think we all know that. Uh, Jay says, guy here late. What do you think about Goody and Harmon on the floor? Mainly the last 10 minutes. No tire. Quincy, players on the court down the stretch, to me, is a concern with Brad this year. Yeah, we thought it was terrible. Um, we agree with most of the line I fan base that Harmon gave him nothing, and he kept keeping him in. So Definitely should have pulled uh, the plug on that one. Yeah. I don't blame uh, him for having those guys in in the second half, but yeah. Um, How many times is, do I have to talk about Goody and Harmon being on the floor together? It sucks. <laughs> yeah, you've said it all season. Uh, Mason Gillis, a line eye killer once again. Is that guy a senior yet? Is he gone? He's got to have a COVID year or something. Maybe Luke um, Goody will transfer to Purdue. Good. Him and you know, great. You know, great. He, he probably, he probably would have been a great player at Purdue just because he, you know. He's I he I would say he's an assignment sound player. They're they're also better at developing than we are, which I think you know I think Brad does a really good job, but still. Yeah, I mean Brad is a we're comparing him to the best in the conference. Point, so I think you almost have to be. Yeah, I don't I, I don't hate it. I mean, there's two ways to do it. So unless you're like an extremist in terms of your systems and the type of guys you want, which I think there are a couple teams in the Big Ten that are. I think Purdue can bring guys in occasionally and it works, but they're big develop, you know, recruits, Iowa. It's pretty much the white teams, essentially what I'm saying. It was a joke, but still, that's how Purdue and Iowa do operate in that fashion more than anybody in the conference, I think. My dog's just whining back there. Sorry. About uh, anyways, <laughs> Gillis yeah. had uh, 10 points, hit two big threes, four for five from the line, six rebounds, four assists. Pretty good game. Gillis, uh, it's his fourth year, so he'll probably be back next year. Oh, yeah. He's uh, shooting 49% from three this year. And in their losses, uh, Ohio State, he had two points on three shots. Nebraska, he had 16 points and five threes, but they lost because nobody else did anything. And then uh, Northwestern, he had four points in 28 minutes. <laughs> so pretty much shut him down. You got a better chance. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Purdue 20 assists on 29 shots. That's a right <laughs> Uh, eight for 20 or eight for 10 from three in the second half, like we talked about. Uh, Brad said that most of them were broken play threes, a lot of offensive rebounds, kickouts, you know, the thing that kills Illinois every game. Um, I got some quotes, and uh, I don't know if I want to read all these because they're going to take forever, but here we go. I uh, started with a uh, quote, great college basketball game. Purdue is where they're at for a reason. They're good. It's getting guys to understand a possession or two, a rebound, a loose ball. That's what sends you home in March. Um, he said, quote, in the first half, we guarded a way that was really solid. In the second half, you have to make some adjustments for Zach. Zach's one of a kind. He was the He has the ability to dominate. He started the second half in that mode. You go to a different coverage, and that's when they make threes. We don't make a three in the second half. Not going to win many games doing that. Uh, he said, quote, if that's the best in the country, and I think it is, we're right there. You have to make a couple plays when the game is on the line to win. We had plenty of opportunities. Um, he gave a, He said he gave the guys the old, there's winners and losers in life. Are you going to be a winner or a loser? 
Uh, he said that you have to make plays to be a winner, and he needs to, quote, remind them of the abruptness of the end. I think he said that before. Um, I think it's kind of what everybody knows. Illinois struggles to win 50-50 balls. Um, the ball doesn't bounce their way a lot because of that. So I don't know what my dog's doing. Uh, he said, quote, this is as much fun as I've had coaching a basketball team here because of who they are as people. This will be at the top of the list of the great groups. And I got one more. He said, quote, going home is about a possession or two. We're right there. You can't guard it any better than we did, but you have to be tough enough and gritty enough and nasty enough and mean enough to come up with a rebound. It has to be yours. It can't be Mason Gillis. You can't make a play with seven seconds on the shot clock and a foul off the ball, <clears throat> Justin Harmon, when they are a half court. Those are the plays that you can't make in a game like this. I beat it up in the locker room, to be very honest. I beat those points up because if we don't understand that, we're really, really good and we can be a Final Four team. I believe that. You have to make those plays. You can put that in bold italics on every f newspaper and every damn chat line that I never read. I don't care. Make big plays to stay alive. The Woo! hell's a chat line? I don't know. He doesn't do social medias. I, I wish he would have dropped the F-bomb, though. He was so close to say F in newspaper. Weak. But he didn't. He should Anyways. have said it. Uh, Underwood now has had the line I finish in the top two and three of the last four seasons. So the other, I think was fifth. Seems pretty good. Yeah. I mean, keep complaining though. Uh, Atlanta fans. fans. I got to do some with my dog. 13 and seven, 16 and four, 15 and five, 11 and nine. They're 13 and six right now. I mean, not bad. We'll take it. We'll take it every day of the week. No doubt about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, this team's good. Probably should be like, you know, 15 and three in the Big Ten right now, or 15 and four, I guess would be that number. It'd be pretty sweet, but uh, you can't, you can't, uh, can't do it every year. I don't know, whatever. Uh, what am I even saying? That's just a waste of words. I'm an idiot. Uh, where are we at? Harris sitting this year means we are trying to do both portal and develop technically. Yeah, I think Sincere is probably a guy that you want to welcome back into the fold next season and let him let him go, let him be that you know on ball defender that we know he is. I don't know what the minutes are going to look like for him, uh, but it'll be interesting to see what he looks like when he uh, when he comes back next year. I expect a lot more from Goody this year. Uh, expect him to be average. At, to, to expected him to uh, reading is very hard. I apologize. exactly. <laughs> well, uh, maybe, maybe I was doing that on purpose. No, uh, I, a lot of these people tight. Eh, never mind. Uh, expect him to average at least ten a game. He has only scored over ten points in a game five times. I think your expectations were too high. I think you should have expected him to average eight a game and make multiple threes a game. Go ahead. Uh, David says, if Illinois is consistently in the top 16 all year in polls and don't make the second weekend, whose fault is it? We'll see what Match happens. Matchups. Always uh, falls second in the weekend or bust, in my opinion, says Wade. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that was the goal all season. I mean, would winning a conference title be good? Yes. Uh, Illinois had probably the best shot of anybody to even have a sniff at it with Purdue. Uh, you win a couple more games, you beat Purdue once, you have a chance. You don't lose Penn State, you don't lose Maryland, um, you have a chance. But it's not act like winning the regular season is nothing. Congratulations. To Locked Purdue. up the two seed. Does Brad lose the first no. round of the Big Ten tournament just to give his guys rest? I think he loses on Saturday if they win Friday. Got to get it. Got to get one under the belt. They haven't Maybe. won a Big Ten tournament game since they won the Big Ten tournament. Yeah. yeah, they lost was, to Indiana two years ago, and they lost. Yeah, to because last year. Andre Corbello can't Corbello make. Corbello sucks. Yeah. So Miserable. yeah, ever since they that was a that was about as dominant, not even in terms of scoring margin, but like that run 
through that Big Ten tournament that year in 2021 was unreal. Like they beat a Rutgers team that ended up being a what seed were they in the tournament? Ten seed. They beat them by uh, 22, and then they beat I an Iowa team that was a two seed by 11. Then they beat Ohio State who was a two seed. Yeah, in overtime. So, yeah, good run. Was Never a good time. forget where I was for that win. Las Vegas. Probably probably shouldn't have gone to overtime, but whatever. Uh, Bootsilla says, win at Iowa, win the first game of the Big Ten tournament, and lose. Let's go. Uh, Warner says, Lenardi's bracket projection today, I actually liked our path facing San Diego State and then maybe Tennessee. That wouldn't be bad. I mean, you got to win some games. So, uh, Jay, who is the potential number one would Illinois want to play if we make it to the Sweet 16? Arizona or Tennessee. Yeah, somebody that runs. Anybody but Houston, UConn, or Purdue. And really anybody, well, they're not going to play Purdue, but anybody but like UConn or Purdue. Yeah. Nope. Damn it. Anybody, I I wouldn't I wouldn't hate playing Houston. Wouldn't love it, but I'd rather play Houston than UConn, I think. That's Maybe true. Yeah. I don't know. We got to get to the 316 first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe so Illinois yeah, catches a win, break. And, win two. Maybe they catch a break and play a 12 seed in the second round. That would be awesome. Yeah. Imagine the complaining. That's like, oh, you go to Sweet 16, you beat a 13 and 12. Also, Lunardi doesn't know what the hell he's talking about in bracketology. So I wouldn't even. Well, it's a good thing that Lunardi is not using his opinion. So he's not talking about anything. He's just <laughs> using his stupid models, which suck. Well, his models suck. Sorry. My bad. Well, you're acting like he's like going in there and be like, Hmm, what will piss Illinois fans off? Let's throw this in there. Yeah, that's exactly how I ordered that. My bad. Yeah, uh, that's exactly how you ordered it. Anybody but Purdue, I'm sick of hearing about Purdue. I, don't, I, don't I think know. as a conference, we need to rise above this and root for the Big Ten to win a championship. Am I wrong here? I mean, how many times we've seen this conference just get rolled over about how they never win in the tournament? Let's get a national champion. Why not? Why is it why does everything have to be so like like it's not we're not talking about Indiana winning one or Iowa, you know? What the hell? Yeah. Why can't we root for them to win a national championship? Or Michigan. I'm not talking about Michigan. I don't know. Root is a strong word, but being okay with it. <laughs> be okay with it, yeah. And be happy that the Big Ten is back. The only reason I wouldn't be is because Purdue fans are insufferable right now. That is a problem. That is definitely a problem that can they, stay like away. they might have surpassed Illinois fans on Twitter. I, what I don't understand with Purdue fans is like, can you, why? It's the same with Illinois fans. Like, can you enjoy something? Like, why does everything have to be so like? Oh, we got to make a comment about this. We got to be upset about this. Like, you guys are twenty-seven, and your team is twenty-seven and three, <laughs> and just the consistent complaining. And you know, it's a social media problem because I'm sure there's plenty of yeah, Purdue alums right. and fans out there that aren't like this. Yeah, but the ones on social media, rational. literally insane. And it goes the same way with Illinois, except the fact that. Produce better, so they should be enjoying this season more than they are. Instead yeah, of instead of trying to defend everything, every like they should just let it, let it go. I don't, I don't get it, but it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, Cheezang says, "I don't get that we don't respect the Illinois program." Not sure where that came from. He might mean Purdue. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Eric says, "I would love to see a Big Ten do great in the tournament." Exactly. Didn't Anybody but Northwestern and Iowa. Uh, Bootsell, they're terrible on Twitter. Terrible. So Big Ten tournament teams, uh, if this team oh, makes a Final true. Four, if this team makes a Final Four, are you okay with it? Purdue. I'm fine with any Big Ten team making the Final Four. Northwestern? Seriously? We're not putting up with that shit? You kidding me? There's no, no way Northwestern's making it. Even if, if they do, though, we're not okay with that. Are, you Are we rooting me? against them? You just said can Absolutely. the Big Ten win. <laughs> I said with the exception of Northwestern, I, I add them now. Okay, all right. Uh, Iowa, I don't want to deal with that. Indiana's yeah. so relevant right now, who cares? And right. Michigan's so relevant right now, who cares? So yeah. I hope, Nebraska, I'm I, fine with. Wisconsin, I don't like it all, but I'm okay with it. Purdue, I thought you were talking about this year, like teams that could actually do something. I, I think Northwestern is our one team that we absolutely hate that's going to make the tournament, right? I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. They're like – they have right. the littlest – they have the littlest of little brother syndrome of all time. <laughs> they like it's the littlest of brothers. You're right. They lost to Chicago State. And then they talk about Illinois like, yeah, we, we beat them. Like, look, we beat them. 
Uh, why don't you guys go look at the result from early January in Champagne? Yeah. Uh, can we shout out? Can we shout out? You're gonna hate this, but can we shout out the Orange Crush and the fans at the State Farm Center? They were good. I mean, it took a number two team coming in um, with a chance to, you know, maybe disappoint them. But hey, when you, when you're a student section and the other team's parents have to call security on you, I think you did your job. Respect, respect. I mean, there's three games in the last four years where they've shown up. Congrats. Iowa 2022, probably, I guess, Iowa 2020 and 2022, Arizona 2021, and then this game, four games. Congrats, yeah. guys. Good stuff. Way to bring the heat. I mean, the, the, the crowd that was non-existent in 2020 uh, against Chicago State, that's pretty much what the crowd's been like in all the other games. Like It's like nobody's there. But, uh, yeah, good stuff. Glad they could uh, help Illinois get a win. Oh wait! Yeah. Also, the free throw distractions suck. By the way, those fi- figure <laughs> those out for next season. That was bad. Yeah. Uh, all right. right. Illinois regular season finale on Sunday, six o'clock. FS1 playing Iowa. Illinois twenty-two and eight, thirteen and six in the Big Ten. Iowa eighteen and twelve, ten and nine. Uh, massive game for Iowa in the bubble. This game matters way more for Iowa than it does for Illinois. Absolutely. That said, you still gotta you still gotta come and, and play well. Um, the Hawkeyes are four and one in their last five. Only loss came to Illinois in that stretch on February 24th. Uh, in that first matchup, it was just a couple weeks ago, Illinois 95-85 win. Really took over mid-second half. As you remember, you know, Brad doing the full-on hockey line change uh, with his rotations in that game. Harmon came up big. Nico Moretti had nine points, came up big. Hawkins had 30 on uh, 9 of 12 sh- or 9 of 11 shooting really efficient game probably Hawkins most efficient game of his career except for the fact that he had five turnovers but he made up for it and washed it with five steals and yeah. the fact that he had 30 points but only two rebounds so not great uh but th- doesn't matter Illinois tip for 27 from 3 in that game out rebounded the Hawkeyes 38 32 uh Iowa was good offensively in this game until they weren't I think I was in a lot of games this year where the final 10 minutes killed them Illinois was plus 12 in the final 10 I have another game off the top of my head from Iowa earlier this season that sticks out uh where Penn State was plus 14 and scored 35 points in the final 10 minutes to beat them on uh February 8th so uh Iowa in the last 10 has been a bit of a concern although um the first 10 of the second half against Northwestern on Saturday they were good. They were plus 10 in that time. They were minus two in the last 10, but they won the game by seven. Northwestern, by the way, free falling. I, I, I seemed like people thought they'd have a chance to get the two seed. They're now 11 and eight in the Big Ten. They've lost. Uh, they they So they after they lost to Nebraska on January 20th, Northwestern, two wins, two losses, two wins, a loss to Rutgers, three wins, and then two losses in a row now. Scored 49 at Michigan State on Wednesday. Anyway, Iowa uh, – Four and one in the last five, so they're playing pretty well. They're first four out, according to Bracket Dom, as of March 5th. I don't know how that changes. They haven't played since then, so I assume they're probably still in a similar position. Uh, they have three home losses this season out of their 12 losses. A couple of surprising ones here. They lost to Michigan on December 10th. Michigan was a, you know, a little bit better back then, but not much. I mean, Michigan, going into that game, had lost uh, five of six. They were four and five before winning that game, beating them 90 yeah. to 80. Giving up 90 points is tough against Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they couldn't stop. Terrace Reed had 19 and six in that game, four offensive rebounds. Iowa also just about as bad as you're going to see them shoot the basketball, even though they still scored 80, but whatever. Let's just look at the numbers. Uh, they lost <laughs> to Purdue 84 70 at home on January 20th, and then lost to Maryland 69 67 on January 24th at home. I believe that was like a big. Uh, Jameer Young had 22 in that game. Julian Reese had 17 and nine, and Iowa only made three threes. So another game where they didn't shoot it well from three. That might be how you have to beat them. They had five threes in their loss to Purdue at home. They had three threes in their loss to uh, Maryland at home, but they had three threes in their loss to or five threes in the loss to Michigan. Yeah, uh, Iowa's I lineup. I rebound this game too. Iowa's lineup in the last game, Josh Dick, 6'5", 200, sophomore. Uh, they got Tony Perkins, 6'4", 205, senior. He had he was 4 for 14 in the, in the win over Northwestern from the field, uh, but he had 14 assists, so made up wow. for it. Uh, Peyton Sanford, a.k.a. Woody Harrelson, lookalike, 6'7", 215, junior, 23 points in the win 
over uh, Northwestern, but against Illinois, not great. He was 3 of 11 in the field with 12 points, 7 rebounds. thought Illinois did a good job against him in that game. Uh, 6'9", 245, senior Ben. I don't care for his last name to, enough to pronounce it. He's from Alberta, shout out. Edmonton. Yeah, he's a Valpo transfer. And they got Owen Freeman, 6'10", 230, freshman. Had uh, In the Illini game, he had eight points in 29 minutes and eight rebounds, three assists. So he, he does fill up the stat sheet. Give him yeah. credit for that, I suppose. Uh, Ken Palm. Yep, uh, going to be really good in a couple of years. Ken Palm, uh, numbers adjusted offensive efficiency, Illinois 126.2. That's fourth in the country. Iowa 121.4. That's ninth. Defensively, somehow uh, Illinois is better. Uh, 102.8 defensive efficiency, 102nd in the country. Iowa 106.3. That's 166th. Uh, Two-point percentage, Illinois 54.9. That's 30th. Iowa 53.8. That's 54th. Three-point percentage, Illinois 35.1. That's 112th. Iowa 34.6. That's 139th. And then free throw percentage, a big discrepancy here in terms of how much better Iowa is. Illinois 74.5. That's 78th, which is fine. But Iowa 78.7. That is 11th in the country. Uh, third time in the last four, three, two, one, zero. Third time in the last five seasons that these teams are playing each other on the final day of the season. The other two were in Champaign. That was 2020 before COVID, Illinois won. And then 2022 to get a share of the Big Ten, Illinois won. Both of those games went down to the final moments. Uh, you had the block on Garza in that first game. Yeah. And then you had uh, Chris Murray not being able to make free throws in that second game. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Illinois had 73 bench minutes the first game. You think we see that again? You think Brad's got to send another message to the boys? I think you know the answer to that question. <laughs> Absolutely not, I think would be the answer. So uh, that would be interesting. Uh, Wade said he was at the game in 2020. It was nuts. Uh, Eric says they were yelling, Zach E.D. sucks. He doesn't suck. Yeah, but that's what student sections do. Uh, Chi saying we got to have a good showing against Caitlin, who will definitely be there. <laughs> so, so I know people think they have free reign to say whatever they want to Terrence Shannon, which, whatever, I don't care. Is that like even remotely close to what they were chanting at Zach Eady, or like remotely like the Shannon stuff they were chanting was obviously way worse. And I don't care what people think about the justification or whatever. We've yeah. said many times, we don't care. Do whatever you want. Uh, unless you really cross the line with like a racial slur or something. But uh, to our knowledge, nobody did that. However, it's like, if you care at all about any student section chant that doesn't cross the line, you, I just hit my mic thing. You are a complete <laughs> fucking pussy and i you know i hate to use that word on here but i just feel like you know you got to hammer the point home somehow if you're upset about a student section jam that doesn't cross the line you are soft as baby shit and it's embarrassing that, that they <laughs> can do that if you're not crossing the line say whatever the hell you want is this not america anymore also maryland soft as hell how soft is maryland oh be respectful be respectful shut up <laughs> shut up True. And that was, you know, that was Maryland chanting at our player. True. So say whatever you um, want. Brad said it best. He said the same thing. Not maybe the words that I use, but still. Sounds like uh, Carver Hawkeye will be sold out this game. Um, I think Pat McCaffrey has said, uh, I don't know if people will show up or not. The fans have been pretty bad this year. So, Pat McAfee? <laughs> Pat McCaffrey. Uh, by the way, Illinois is. Is that his name? Patrick? Yeah, Patrick McCaffrey. Illinois is uh, one and three. Nope, sorry. Wait, yeah, no, wait. Yeah, Illinois is one and three under Brad Underwood at Carver Hawkeye. The last win was 87 83 in 2021, December. Uh, Eric says, Why do we always play Iowa in the last game? I don't know, because the Big Ten thinks it's a rivalry, I guess. Uh, Sleeper Media was not happy with the Orange Crush yelling at Zach. I'm shocked. If what they were yelling was that he sucks, like, who cares? Yeah. My God. If that's actually, like, come on. It's kind of, like, that's everywhere. That's whatever. That's like, Anyways. That's like two. That's like 20%. That's like going 20%. That's not even trying that hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, players watch. Uh, I'm going to go with Justin Harmon. Because he was absolutely brutal against Purdue. 
Um, we're going to need his defense, I think, and his tenacity on defense. Uh, you don't have to worry about a Zach Eady where you're, you know, drop coveraging or you, you're bringing guards down to to uh, disrupt somebody like Creaky or Freeman. So hopefully Coleman can handle them. They can keep out on the guards. Harmon needs to step up after the last game. And then I'm going with Peyton Sanford. I went, I'm went. i pretty sure I went with him in the first matchup. Um, you, you just can't let Sanford get going from three. We talked about the Northwestern game. He's four of eight in that game. Uh, in the Illinois game, he was uh, three of 11 from the field, went 0 for 2 from three. So we only let him get off two threes. He only had 12 points. Can't let him get hot at home in front of a crowd. So. Uh, you limit Iowa's threes and you rebound the ball. I think Illinois wins this game. Not that I picked that they were going to do that, but. Yeah, uh, I went with uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. Bounce back spot. Hopefully has a better game in this one. You look at the first game that they played, Brad kind of uh, challenged him specifically to start rebounding, which hate that we have to keep doing this, but he ended up uh, with three rebounds in that game. He did a big one. I think he had a putback rebound off of a free throw in that game. Uh, only had 12 points, so hopefully he plays better uh, in this one than he did that one. I think it's a good matchup for him. Uh, then yeah. Josh Dix for Iowa had 20 points, a 9 of 15 shooting in the first game against Illinois, so hopefully they can contain him a little bit better, maybe less of Terrence or uh, less of Ty Rogers trying to guard him, which I think Ty Rogers was guarding him in spots during that game. Yeah, he got a, like 15 minutes. So. He got a lot of like 15 foot jumpers in the first matchup. So being limited him from doing that it should be all right. Um, people going at sleepers and the field of 68 in chat. Appreciate you guys. Um, Wade, I don't have a good feeling about this game. Hope I'm wrong. You and me too, Wade. Uh, Eric agrees. Justin needs to step up on Sunday. Uh, Chi Zang agrees with you. Want a good TSJ bounce back game. Uh, field of 68. Uh, people agree with the fact that they suck. Okay. Uh, Ayo, what's going on? Best or funniest part of the podcast is when you say, Brad says, knowing how much of a salesman Underwood is. Good work, boys. Got to be. You got to. You got to be a salesman if you want to succeed at this. Uh, at this job, if you're Brad, that's part of the industry. That's what Josh pays him the big bucks for. So, yeah. By All the right. way, uh, field oh. sixty eight. Field sixty eight is not as bad as people are saying. Just saying. All right, predictions. Um, I do Eric hate. Says, I do hate the way they go about it. Eric says, "Line I eighty five, Iowa eighty. Um. Yeah, I'm got, I got Illinois losing this one, guys. Uh, Illinois 79, Iowa 85. I hope that I am wrong, but I think Iowa needs this game so bad that uh, they're just they're just going to want it more. And that's Illinois' problem this year is not wanting the game more. And I think Iowa is going to get it. They're going to get off the bubble. And they're going to be a tournament team. Sorry. Yeah, that's a spineless pick. Uh, I'm taking Illinois to win 89-87. Uh, big spot to ruin Iowa. Not ruin their chances, but definitely hurt them a little more. This is a huge opportunity for them to to get a win. I mean, you look at their Big Ten wins this year. Their best one is uh, at Michigan State, and they have a win over Wisconsin. But other than that, I mean, Nebraska, I guess. But the non-conference, they have pretty much nothing except for a Seton Hall win. And, uh, you know, some of their losses as well, you know, you lose to Penn State, you lose to Michigan, stuff like that. Not great, but uh, I just think Illinois is better. Yeah, I, I don't disagree that they're better. I just think that Iowa yeah, just, just game so spineless, bad. Spineless, yeah. Whatever. I could have swore I picked Purdue to win the last game, and I didn't. So You really botched that one. Don't spineless me, buddy. Okay, uh, in the last watch party, you were talking about how, yeah, yeah, I picked – yeah, I definitely picked uh, – yeah, picked, I'm an idiot. You picked Illinois. I picked Purdue. And it yeah, was I'm an idiot. Playoff. Yeah. Uh, Boots, Bootsilla says I have a good feeling. 7-0 and oh after a loss this year. It's true. Those and, wins. Uh, he Valpo, called me a dummy. Thanks, Bootsilla. Appreciate it. Definitely you. agree with that. Uh, <laughs> those seven wins are Valpo, Colgate, Michigan State, Michigan, Indiana, Michigan, and Iowa. So let's do it again. Already did it to <laughs> Michigan twice. Uh, Chi Zhang says, Will Orange Crush invade secretly this year, but actually, secretly? I don't know. I, I, 
I think they already made their trip. That they. I don't made. think we need them. Uh, Eric says you also picked whiskey, Tyler. No, Ethan picked Wisconsin. Oh, who cares? I picked Illinois to win that game. Thank you. All right. Uh, we will see. Oh, we got more stuff. Shoot. Oh, All right. God. Um, Ethan wants to talk about the article from 247 that Wagner posted today or Warner post. One of the 247 guys posted. Um, it said a line I expected to hit the transfer portal hard. Sure. Wait a second. A team with a senior and then a junior and then a senior, then a senior, then a senior, then a junior, then a senior is going to be in the portal. What the hell? <laughs> I mean, what are we doing? Can we enjoy the fucking tournament yeah, for once? I, I mean, I don't have to read all this, right? I will. You will? You will? Yep. All right. Apparently, they need a point guard, a scorer, and a wing. Who the fuck doesn't? <laughs> uh, okay. They're losing some extremely key players from this team, including breakout star Marcus Damask and Terrence Shannon Jr. No mention of Coleman Hawkins yet. Both of those guys are their leading scorers. They're going to be losing quite a bit of buckets. Oh, you don't fucking say, huh? <clears throat> They're losing Quincy Garrier. There are big question marks around Coleman Hawkins and Luke Goody. Hawkins is in his fourth season. Will he exercise his COVID year and come back or potentially test the portal? What the fucking fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Testing the portal? You really think he's going to come back? He's obviously going to enter the draft, and he doesn't get drafted. He'll get some sort of deal and probably play in the G League, or he'll play in the NBA somewhere. Shut up. Um, all that to say that they are going to need a lot of scoring in this next class. They're losing Terrence Shannon and Marcus Damask, and they need more scoring. They got to get more scoring to the team. Uh, yeah, they just, I'm fucking shocked. Uh, they are definitely going to need a point guard as they continue to mold and evolve. Whoa, those are some crazy words. What the fuck is this guy talking about? They've got four-star freshman Jace Butler coming in, and he should have also added, if anything tells us about the history of the Illinois basketball, I'm sure Jace Butler is going to play a huge key role on the next year's fucking team. No, he's not. <laughs> <clears throat> but coming into an experienced and older Big Ten they are going to need somebody to lead the way so these guys can find their footing. Captain, fucking obvious. Jesus Christ, no shit. You really need to waste an article? Make people pay money for this bullshit? Are you kidding me? Holy fuck. Anybody who reads that and thinks it's great paid content, don't pay for it. You're an idiot if you pay for that. Anyway, especially when this Branham guy doesn't know a fucking thing about this program, okay? I don't care. I'm sure he's great at his job. I don't give a fuck. Uh, anyway. They're going to need a point guard. Boy, you want to say that a couple more times there? Huh? Three, four, five? Do they need a point guard? Wait a second. I've never heard of that. They need a point guard? I, I, I can't believe that. Uh, depending on what Coleman's Hawk, Coleman Hawkins does. Dude, he's not coming back. Like, what? Why, why are we even entertaining that? He's clearly not coming back. He barely came back last year. They're probably going to need two to three wings. Yes, because depending on what Coleman Hawkins does, will determine how many wings they need. Jesus. <laughs> uh, you missed the part where it says they need a lot of scoring. I, I, I very much apologize. I can't believe I missed that. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, Great stuff. Awesome article. Yeah. Really enjoyed All right. It. I think we reached our F-bomb quota with that. So We're talking to Illini fans like they're five years old. <laughs> Foodsill says, already looking at next year. Goodness. AI wrote that article. Uh, Chizang says, just wait till Damascus gets his medical red shirt. 26 year old college player. Do we want that? I guess. Um, and then this article will be very wrong. See ya, Eric. Chizang says they better shred Coleman's puzzle if he goes into the portal. Uh, Marcus has one more year of eligibility. Eric says, I, he's got to get a medical red shirt, I believe. Damascus is older or Damascus is younger than Damascus would be the same age as Gary a next year. He oh, played. Okay. All right. 24.6. Gotcha. All right, All right. Yeah. People are idiots. Are we going around the Big Ten? Was there anything I, I to talk couple, about? I got a couple things to say. Um, okay. Illinois a locked very, up the two seed. Yeah. Very, uh, a very, uh, c congratulations to Purdue. Great stuff. 16 and three. Right. I mean, look, the, the best team won the conference. It's that simple. And you know what? I have absolutely zero problem with Braden Smith doing what he did 
when he made that three. Anybody that's mad about that, get a get a life. And and I've been told to get a life many times, which I totally agree with. But also, these people also need to get a life. Yeah. Like our our reaction was exactly what I felt in the moment. It was like, damn, that sucks. What can you do? I mean, per, Edie's tap out saved the. the I mean, it that did. Was, yeah, yeah, that was a full game. So. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about this Indiana thing with uh, McNeely decommitting yeah. from Indiana. That's that's a tough one. I'm glad Indiana is out there. Uh, Indiana fan accounts are out there defending Purdue because they hate Illinois so much. Fucking losers. <laughs> Never be relevant insane. again. Yeah. Absolute bum program. And just wait when your darling alum, Dusty May, goes to Ohio State this year instead of going to Indiana because you want to keep Mike Woodson, who's playing basketball from 19 fucking 80. In the Big Ten, which if any conference, if it could work in any conference, it would be this one. But I think they're learning that, hey, uh, we need a TJJ type player to make things work in the Big Ten. And Indiana's not good enough on either side of the ball. That's simple. Um, yeah, then you got uh, season finales this week. End Sunday is the big one uh, for games. You still got Minnesota at Northwestern on Saturday. Uh, yeah, I was I was gonna say, who do you think gets that double buy spot between Nebraska, Northwestern, Wisconsin's kind of screwed? They play Purdue. I need to so, see the scenarios for this. I'm I'm gonna tell them to you right now. Nebraska plays Michigan. Northwestern plays Minnesota, and then the other two would be Iowa and Michigan State that have a chance, but those two teams would have to lose. So if Wisconsin I, wins, they're automatically gonna be the three, right? <laughs> If Wisconsin wins, they'll be the four. No, the three. Yeah. Because I would think beating Purdue. Yeah, would be a win against the team in front of you. Well, I guess but Nebraska, Northwestern, Northwestern would be that. Nebraska. Yeah. Too. yeah okay. So it would be about beat. I think it would be Northwestern because they beat Illinois. So that's two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to so, say Northwestern gets the three. And who does Nebraska play? Nebraska plays Michigan. At I thought you said Northwestern plays Michigan. No, Northwestern plays Minnesota. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I just said that. Idiot. <laughs> I'm going to say. So I'm I gonna think say Northwestern Wisconsin. probably has it locked up. Three I'm going to say Wisconsin ends up getting the five. Really? I'm going to say Northwestern three, Nebraska four. Where does that put the bracket? Like, what's the bracket right now? Uh, uh, the numbers on that one. Uh, you also got Michigan State at Indiana on Saturday, uh, Sunday. Uh, that's CBS. Like these CBS Big Ten games are just so bad. It's it's tough. They they and it's tough because you know they they do the Sunday games and you, you know Illinois Purdue both games end up being one of them was Friday, the other one was Tuesday, and then Illinois Wisconsin's a Saturday, and then you know some of these other matchups being on Saturday or late Sunday. Uh, Ohio State Rutgers as well. Wisconsin produced the big one. That's eleven thirty a.m. Central on Fox. At Mackey. Nebraska, Michigan, I guess I can mention mm. as well. Really cold start for our conference tournament picks, by the way. Not good. Not good. Not good at all. I'm shocked. Me as well. I'm very shocked. Definitely. All right. Um, so the – I don't freaking know, dude. Figure it out. I don't know. Where do I find a preview? Okay, so basically what it comes down to right now is that one team is going to do one thing and the other team is going to do mm-hmm. another thing, and then it's going to shake out the seeds. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Um. Yeah, I got nothing. I got a schedule, but that's about it. So the – uh, eight seed plays a nine seed. The five seed plays a twelve seed. Thirteen. I got winner. it. The seven seed plays a ten seed. I got it. Illinois would play the winner of seven ten. So, as of right now, the day one games would be thirteen Rutgers against twelve Maryland, mm-hmm. fourteen Michigan against eleven Penn State. The day two games would be nine Minnesota against eight Indiana. Uh, and then you would have the game one winner, which is the. Uh, uh, Rutgers, Maryland winner would play five Northwestern and then 10 seven is Ohio state, Michigan state. And then the Michigan Penn state winner would play Iowa. 
and then day three would be, you know, Purdue would play early, and then Nebraska at four would play uh, after that, and then Illinois would play the first night game, and then the three would play the uh, second. So, yeah, easy enough. Yeah, and then it shifts over to CBS for the weekend. So yeah, all right, there you go, big spot. Cheezang says this is the least excited he's been for the Big Ten tournament in a while. Yeah, there's not very many Thoughts? good teams. Yeah, it's not very many good Big teams. Big Ten sucks. It's All tough. right. I think that will do it for us. As always, we want to thank the Alamo Steakhouse and Saloon at 700 East Broadway Avenue in Mattoon, Illinois. You can find them online at www.alamo-steakhouse.com. March specials are here Friday tonight. Uh, swordfish kebabs, which is a swordfish on a skewer with bacon, cherry tomatoes, grilled and topped with cilantro and a lime grimalata. Uh, tomorrow, Saturday, you can get a steak uh, pavoy. I don't know how to speak Latin or whatever this is, uh, but it's an eight ounce beef filet with a pepper and brandy cream sauce. Sounds delicious. Don't cook at home. Go out and eat. Visit the Alamo Steakhouse and Saloon. Um, if you guys would like to be a sponsor for our episodes or our watch parties, please reach out to us on Twitter or email us at IlliniBasketballPodcast at gmail.com. As always, thanks for coming out. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for commenting. Like, subscribe. We are like 14 away from 500 or something like that. So hit that subscribe button if you can. We appreciate you all, as always. And we will see you Sunday. Sure. Sure. I guess. Whatever. <laughs> Imbrots is mad about Peacock. All right. Crypto, thanks for coming out. Uh, Imbrots, thanks. Eric, Chizang, all you guys. Warner, Bootzilla. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us. I got to get going to a birthday party. Yep. We'll see everybody uh, Sunday night, I guess. Uh, goodbye.